Hey everybody, welcome to Broadway.com's Live at Five. It is Monday, June 3rd. It is officially Pride Month. Happy Pride, Happy Beth. Pride. Happy Pride. I am Ryan Lee Gilbert. And I'm Beth Stevens. And of course, we are joined here in the studio by Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. And we are joined by somebody else fantastic this evening as well. Who do we have with us today, Beth? Mark Crowley. Yes. yes. The boys in the band a very long time ago, and he's going to talk about that fa yes. fabulous revival. Incredible. Tony-nominated yes. revival of, of that play. Uh, but before we talk to Mart and about the boys in the band, let's talk about today's Top 5. Congratulations are in order for these fresh Drama Desk winners. So fresh. So fresh. Freshly more winners. Minted. More, more awards. Winners. <laughs> more awards. It is Tony week. It is. It's I a mean, big week. Pretty close. Yeah. Uh, but let's talk about the Drama Desk. That was last Absolutely. night's 64th annual Drama Desk Awards. The Prom won Best Musical, and Hades Town Tootsie and The Ferryman all won four each. Lots of hey. love. Hey. Lots of love spread love around. Spread around. Ferryman won Best Play. Mm -hmm. Fiddler on the Roof, that's the Yiddish language revival, won Best Revival of a Musical, and Waverly Gallery came out on top with Outstanding Revival of a play. Right. The evening was hosted by Michael Yuri. We have some fabulous photos on the site of the mm -hmm. after party. Right? Yes, Swanky. of course. Mm -hmm. So check it out. And you have only a little bit, one more week left to catch this Shakespearean show on Broadway. Yes, so director Sam Gold's uh, revival, gender you know, fluid revival gender of, fluid. Uh, of <laughs> gender, gender, <laughs> gender bent uh, mm. revival of Shakespeare's King Lear, of course, starring uh, Glenda Jackson, is closing a little bit early on Broadway. So initially, it was going to run through July 7th uh, um, at the, um, I'm sorry, uh, mm. yes, it was going to run initially through July 7th at the Court Theater. It will now close on June 9th. So you have a little bit of time just left. Just until Sunday. Just until Sunday. So you have a little bit of time left to go see that. Um, of course, as we said, Glenda Jackson headlines that play, but also Tony nominee Ruth Wilson stars in the dual roles of Cordelia and the King's Fool. Also, Jane Howdy Shell, Douglas, uh, John Douglas Thompson, Elizabeth Marvel, Pedro Pascal, Aisling O'Sullivan, and Sean Carvajal are all in that production as well. Um, it will have played 34 previews and 76 regular performances at the time of closing. It opened back in April. Incredible production, so if you have not seen it yet, make sure you take advantage. And this news is bringing sunshine to any cloudy day. Oh, there are so many song so many. lyrics we could use. Yes. But let's just say, mm -hmm. get ready, because Ain't Too Proud is going to go on tour. It is. Another Fair. tour. Very exciting, yes. Very exciting. Leading this up one, to these awards, you get a lot of these. You get a lot of yeah. information about it. Mm -hmm. This one will launch at the Providence Performing Arts Center in Providence, Rhode Island, in July 2020. A year. It's a little a over a year. A year and a yeah. month. And it's going to hit more than 50 cities coast to coast. This is going to be a hit everywhere. Yeah, oh, absolutely. A hit yes. everywhere. And, of course, there will be a homecoming in the Temptations hometown of Detroit. Which is very cool. As well as a triumphant right. return to the John F. Kennedy Center of the Arts in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. Cool mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, up for 12 Tony Awards. Yes, all sorts of things. So, yeah, make sure you check Casting it out. Casting to be announced. Just hold on. we got a year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got a whole entire year. And people all across the country are going to be learning what the Constitution means to them. Speaking of national <laughs> tours, uh, Heidi Schreck's Tony nominated to play What the Constitution Means to Me is also going to launch a national tour. It will embark on that tour in January of 2020, so not as far off, right. uh, but still a little bit of a ways. Um, it will begin its run at the Mark Taper Forum in Los Angeles, California, but it will play 40 weeks over 22 cities wow. that have been announced so far. Um, everything else, all the venues, all the specific dates, casting, uh, will be announced at a later date. Uh, what's interesting about this is, of course, it is autobiographical. Heidi Schreck plays uh, a, a different, a, different Asian age versions of herself in the play as well. So her and the, the show's director, Oliver Butler, are putting a lot of thought in who's going to portray Heidi Schreck in this production. Um, so they are putting lots of great work and thought into that. Um, of course, What the Constitution Means to Me has been extended twice on Broadway. Wow. Uh, so you have until August 24th to go to the Helen Hayes Theater to see that or catch it on tour. Mm -hmm. City Center has announced its upcoming season, and it looks like I'm just going to be living there the whole summer. It's going to be <laughs> Guys, there. we're moving into we're moving City in. Center, yes. New York City Center. I think they can accommodate all of us. That's fine. Yeah, sure, fine. Yeah, yeah, well, let me tell you about these exciting revivals that they are going to do for the 2020 Encore season. Are you ready? 
No, 2002. Tony Winnie Musical, Thoroughly Modern Millie, starring Tony nominee Ashley Park. That's so exciting. So good. That is, so yeah. So good. She's going to kill it. Going, absolutely. That's going to be very exciting. Also, they will offer up a special gala production of Evita. I like to say it like that because that's a how Vita? Patty Lapone says it. With the T. <laughs> yeah. Just follow me, yes. people. Just mm-hmm. stay with me. And we, they were go- they're going to do Mac and Mabel, one of my favorite shows of all time, February 19th through the 23rd, 2020. I can't believe I'm saying those words. Oui. <laughs> also, the 1948 musical Love Life, directed by Tony winner, Tony winning actress, but she's it's also a director, Victoria it's very Clark. Cool. Mm-hmm. All so much going on there, but let me just give you the dates for Thoroughly Modern Millie so you can mark it down. Mm-hmm. Yes. May 6th through the 10th, 2020. Next Check out the site for all the additional information. Everything's booked up for 2020. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're busy. Right? We're, we're, moving, in we're moving in next year. All of our plans. moving in next year. That's yeah, um, moving in next year. Of course, since it is a Monday, there are lots of other things on the site. Because we no longer have Live at Five on Friday, we have mm-hmm. so much to tell you about what went on Broadway.com this weekend and on yes. Friday. Um, right now, we have, uh, we have a, some features rolling out right now, and they are breaking down all of the Tony-nominated performances this year. So the, here's what you can already see of the best lead actress in a play you can check all those out featured actor it's like a in a celebration musical. of each category it's not predictions so right yeah. no we kind of just tell you a little bit about this performance and this production and you know all the work that kind of went into it we did your homework for you we did yes <laughs> what else also, oh yeah. well, there's a wonderful feature with lou libertor and brandon uranowitz so lou cool. libertor originated the role of larry in burn this and now of course brandon uranowitz is tony nominated for the revival there's that. There's a feature I did. Yes, you did. Christine Nielsen mm-hmm. and Julie White. So fantastic. Talking about all kinds of dirty, dirty things <laughs> as the like, Tony nominated stars of yep. Gary. Yep, absolutely. So much more. Um, Paul Wontor talked to Richie Jackson, did a feature on him producer as well. Of producer. Producer. Short song. Mm hmm, absolutely. And also, we spoke with the producers of The Prom. There's a feature on them as well. Um, Secrets of the Tony nominee videos. We do it every you year. We love these. We yes. love these. <laughs> do, do I love these? Yeah. Yes. We ask the Tony nominees lots of ridiculous questions, including Mark Crowley, who's here today, and mm-hmm. they give us answers. We're going to have three videos Whoa. this year. Yes. First one has gone up, and the second one will go up tomorrow. Uh, Caitlin Kuninen came right here and sang her heart out, Unruly Heart, and you can watch a video of that as well. Uh, a new building Broadway with Bart Scher and Aaron Sorkin for yeah. To Kill a Mockingbird. Very exciting. Um, we also break down what's closing, who's leaving, what productions, replacements in going in, yet for the month of June. And we give you our picks, staff picks for the month of June. We did. Yeah, Lots what of cast albums. What was your staff pick? Hades Town cast album. Of course. Woo-hoo. Can't yeah. wait. Vanessa Carlton going to Beautiful. Yeah, that was good mine. Stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Broadway.com Audience Choice Awards happened last week. Beth and I hosted Live at Five for <laughs> yes, you. Yes, we did. For if you hours. watched that marathon, <laughs> Live at Five. Um, <laughs> so we have photos and a portrait booth, booth from that event as well. Also, uh, Emilio Madrid Cuser went behind the scenes at Ain't Too Proud on Broadway and lots of photos from that. And uh, our London correspondent, Dove Cameron, spoke with, I mean, uh, he's Matt, our, Wolf. Matt Wolf, yeah. spoke with Dove Cameron, <laughs> who's in The Light in the Piazza. Yes. But they haven't even started yet. But she told us all about her Broadway yeah. dreams. She's got plans and dreams and all sorts of and wishes. And friends. Yeah. And she has two Broadway mamas. I'm going to give you a hint. One is Kristen Chenoweth. The other? You have to go read it. Okay. Figure it out. Fine, I won't tell you. Cheyenne <laughs> Jackson, I won't tell you. All right. All right, so Beth, there you thank go. you so That's much. That's a big list. Me. I hope you guys were taking notes. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Um, Caitlin, would you tell us a little bit about today's guest? Gladly. Yes, we have the Mark Crowley here with us in the studio. He is the playwright behind the Tony nominated The Boys in the Band, which is currently up for Best Revival of a Play. The play made its acclaimed premiere off Broadway in 1968, and it was revived on Broadway for its 50th anniversary last year. The play was adapted into a feature film in 1970 and a spe- Netflix feature film special helmed by Ryan Murphy. Shout out. He's doing a lot of awesome things for Broadway. Um, featuring the entire Broadway cast. That's in the works too. Um, Robin De Jesus, who also starred in the Broadway production, is also Tony nominated. He was here um, just a few weeks ago. Uh, make sure you follow Boys Band B-Way on social media to stay up to date on all things the boys in the band. And please leave all of your questions in the comments below. Please welcome Mr. Mark Crowley and Ryan Lee Gilbert. Hello there, sir. Hi. It's so it's such a pleasure and such an honor to talk with you today. I'm so excited. Um, the boys in the band. 
50 years yeah. after having <clears throat> its uh, off-Broadway premiere, had a Broadway revival. How does it feel to be celebrating a Tony Award nomination for, for that work. <laughs> so well, it, it's quite unreal. I, mean, <laughs> I can imagine. I have to yeah. apologize for my voice today. I oh, no, I'm please. losing, <laughs> uh, but we still have a little bit left. So, <laughs> Yeah, it must feel remarkable to be. Yeah, it does. It's um, I, I, I didn't even know that it included me until I it was called because the rules were changed this year. Did you know that? That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And w did you ever imagine when you were w even when you were writing it or when it had because I mean when it premiered off Broadway it was a smash success right away but did you ever imagine that Broadway would be in, in the future for this no, work <laughs> No No everybody that knew me my friends they all you know they thought I was going around the bend a bit when I tell them what I was working on and uh, uh, I uh, I just kept going, you know. I, mm -hmm. uh, I I had faith in in something. I don't know what it was myself. I hope. <laughs> and um, so um, I finally typed the end and put it on my arm and came to New York with yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And the trouble began. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Right. You had in you had a top tier team bringing th this production, reviving it on Broadway oh. with with Joe Mantello and with that incredible cast of actors that you had. What kind of what was that process like, f f you know, for you to either participate in or to observe what kind of changes were made for it? Or was it really the your initial vision just supplanted on no uh, <clears throat> it it's an unrealistic set so I didn't know how that was going to turn mm -hmm. out but I was an all incredible set I was beautiful yeah. wasn't yeah. it I, I told David Zinn who uh, designed it I said it it looks like uh, either a bowl of cherries or what the, the late great Diane of Reeland called her own apartment which was a a garden in hell, <laughs> <laughs> because it was red on red on red on red on red, and what wasn't red was mirrored, you know, so it was right. a startling kind of set. And um, I'm sorry, David is not nominated, really. I know. I thought I he know. would yeah. be. Yeah. Right. Was there a, a, the the original production of the, your it was very long too right were there were there were there changes to sort of pare it down a little bit for for new audiences or is that what we saw on Broadway was exactly your vision of that mm -hmm. play No I mean the, the play was written in two acts mm -hmm. which was unusual for the time I got to tell you and you know, everything was a three act play back yeah. then So um uh, Joe wanted to, to do it all in one piece, right. and I thought that was a good idea because Certainly. it is uh, all in one piece, literally. If you take out end of Act One, then Act Two, you've got it uh, together as it should be. I mean, in the uh, first film version, I call it the first because you just mentioned that it's going to be filmed again. Right. Yeah. And I don't keep. I have, hope I'm not digressing every moment, but. I think there's a Guinness Book of Records here because <laughs> I can't think of another play that was made into a movie twice mm. that had the exact uh, original actors from New each York time. each yeah. time. Right. Yeah, yeah, I think it's quite amazing. Absolutely. I yeah. want to talk about that a little bit because I've read before, you know, you've opened up that initially when you were casting for, for Off-Broadway, it was difficult to find actors that were willing to play gay. And now you fast forward to 2018 and you've got uh, nine, you know, out gay actors playing mm -hmm. these roles. What was it like for you to sort of see the, the two what difference of approach and the difference of people willing and wanting to do this? Well, the first time, <laughs> we would take anybody who would do it, you know? I mean, we were beating the bushes. And, um, and the actors who did do it were very brave. It was quite a different world then. I mean, you, they, you could get arrested for doing the things mm -hmm. they do in this play. You know? right. And that's why Emery keeps saying every time the doorbell rings, everybody three feet apart, uh, he means that there was a law for gay bars at that time mm -hmm. that um, the guys in the bars had to be three feet away. Yeah. Um, it was quite awful, ridiculous, and demeaning, but that's the way it was. So naturally, everybody's agent told them not to do this play called The Boys in the Band. Mm -hmm. And the ones that, <clears throat> excuse me, 
that that we uh, we asked to do. I mean, there really wasn't any auditioning to one or two mm -hmm. roles, and then we just offered the roles to other people, and many of them turned it down, of course. And the ones who accepted, they came in and read, <clears throat> and then their agents told them uh, not to do it. When we said, "Oh, you're terrific," yeah. would would you do the part? The agent said, "Don't do it. It's a career killer, and you'll never work again." You know, mm -hmm. really. And so, therefore, I mean, I have to acknowledge the bravery of the guys who did it Certainly. anyway. Yeah. Yeah, and now you've got a a listers yeah, yeah. clamoring to do well, it. Well, yeah. I mean. I think that, I don't know whose idea it was, whether it was Ryan or Joe, or it was a mutual um, decision, but they wanted uh, a cast of all out successful gay actors. Yeah. Yeah, and no. I, I got it. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know that you've said there was a period of time after, you know, when uh, The Boys in the Band was initially a very big mm. hit off Broadway, but then there were some criticisms leveled at it post the Stonewall riots and all of that, and people started to have a, a little bit of a different view on it. But now, how when they when the idea that came up to revive it on Broadway, mm -hmm. how did you feel? Were you nervous at all about younger audience? Would younger audiences sort of understand the anger that you were writing? from at that time you know because you, you said like there wasn't people were like why didn't you write you know all the good things about gay and you've said like there weren't very many good things about being gay did you think well, that that would translate for younger and newer audiences that were experiencing it for the first um, time I think there's still today a lot more <laughs> hatred than we admit certainly and yeah. um, it's you know mostly in the heartland of the country, mm -hmm. uh, not in the big cities on the coast as much, but some here too. Yeah. Always you can find it. I mean, you know, there are always incidents of people being violently treated. Absolutely. Uh, but then it was a serious matter. I mean, uh, I was working for Natalie Wood as her secretary, and that was when she was shooting West Side Story. Right, right. And I got very friendly with all of the dancers, all of the dancers who were gay. And um, we all got in comic drag. Well, not serious, but I don't know if you've ever heard of the, of the Girls of St. Trinian's or the Bells of St. Trinian's. Mm -hmm. It was an English movie about a band of girls that, that attend a private school, and they're all just vicious and that they walk around with hockey sticks and hit each other and they've got band-aids and <laughs> arms in the sling and Thanks. they're really awful and um, so we went as the uh, bells of St. Trinian's about nine of us mm -hmm. and um, then suddenly whistles were blown and the police invaded a private home in West Hollywood right. and they arrested us and so that was the way it was. We spent the night in jail. Of course, we were offered one phone call. And I thought, well, the only person I know who can get us out of here is Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's a good person to have. So uh, I, I called, and I woke her up. <laughs> And I told her what had happened, and she said, all right, just stay. Where. I said, well, no, we're going to stay where we are. We can't move. <laughs> but the guys all had to shoot. They yeah. had to go to work. Sure. And yeah. they were terrified that, they, that they'd be replaced or lose their jobs over this wow. incident or that it would all get in the papers. Wow. And yeah. so Natalie sent um, a bail bondsman. I don't know, through her lawyer. Mm -hmm. She called her lawyer and said, you know, help me out here. And uh, he got us all out and all in time for the guys to show up at the studio and continue a, a dance number that had yeah. been started filming. It was incredible. I don't know how they had the stamina to do it because I stumbled home and uh, slept the rest of the day, yeah. you know. Yeah. No, I know so much has been, you've been so open about your relationship with Natalie Wood during that time. Yeah. What, how, how, what kind of 
impact did that did that long friendship with her have on your life and your ability to pursue your dreams? Well, you know? um, I met her because I I was uh, I was a, a gopher, I guess you would call it a gopher coffee, gopher something right. film. Uh, on films in, that were shot in New York, and I worked for some very high-profile directors. Ilya like, Kazan, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah eventually, him, uh, and it was during the shooting of *Splendor in the Grass*, which, of course, Natalie was in, uh, that we became very, very friendly. And after it was over, I, I didn't have a job. I didn't know what the next picture would be. And I'd ask Kazan if I could be on another picture with him. And uh, he said, well, he was going to go to Turkey and spend months there doing research for his next picture. And I said, well, bring me along. I can take the notes and type them up and yeah. so forth. He said, no, 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 no. You get yourself another job. And so Natalie said, she had just got uh, the part of Maria in mm -hmm. West Side Story during the shooting of Splendor. Right. So uh, she said, I don't have an assistant. I can't pack up everything in the apartment here in New York, get it back to California. Why don't you do all that and ship it and send it and come on out? And I didn't want to do it because I wanted to be a writer. Mm -hmm. And I was, you know, leery of getting in Hollywood where I didn't know anybody. And I thought I was doing pretty good in New York. I was sending out scripts and some of them were being considered by various television shows that did, uh, mm -hmm. excuse me, um, that did uh, live drama in right. those days, yeah. And you were considered pretty big if you got your script on one of those. Um, so I said, oh, I don't want to leave New York. And uh, she said, well, you don't have an agent. <laughs> That's one reason you can't get a job. <laughs> so if you come out and work for me just during the time of West Side Story and help me out, it'll only be for three months, just like this picture. And... Um, I will introduce you to some of the guys at William Morris. Mm -hmm. Well, that convinced me, yeah. and I went. And she kept her word, and my first agent was a junior agent at William Morris. And uh, West Side Story <laughs> went on for six yeah, with months. Yeah, West Side Story. <laughs> right. For uh, instead of three. And then after that, she'd already been cast in Gypsy. And she said, please stay. Just stay for Gypsy. So one more, and then I sold some uh, scripts that I had been right, working yeah. on. The agent did, got them going, and I left her. Uh, but I stayed in California, and I, I was there for seven years. Right, know. right. And I know that you've written a uh, sequel to The Boys in the Band, yeah. the, the Boys from the Men, with this sort of renewed interest in The Boys in the Band, with its, you know, taking the journey over to Netflix as well. Is that something, because I know it had its world premiere back in like 2000 or Three, 2002, yeah, 2003. Yeah, Do you think that there, that, that <clears throat> it's, it's a property that you can see also like getting new, is it something you'd like to see get renewed attention? Well, I don't really know. Um, naturally, nobody's ever heard of it, so I think the chances are slim mm. uh, for it. Uh, maybe it'll get done now that Boys is going to be filmed right. and yeah. people will have an interest in what happened to some of them mm -hmm. because it's... Uh, they're all middle-aged men in it, and that's not really a pretty <laughs> thing to see on a stage all night would be... You know, uh, nine guys who are um, just old codgers, you mm -hmm. know, like I am now. Um, <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> I don't know about that. Oh, by the way, it's called The Men the from men. the Boys. The Men from the Boys, yeah, I apologize. Of, That's yeah, right. I, yeah, I mean, I wish we could go back and get younger. That would help. <laughs> <laughs> right. I know we've got we've got lots of people watching yes. and following along. What, what would some of the people like to know from Mart? Yes. So Alex wants to know, what is it? what did it feel like to, you guys talked about it a little bit, but like what were some emotions that were going through on opening night on Broadway, mm. seeing the cast be full of, you know, out and proud, successful gay men and the response from the audience. What was that moment like for you? 
Well, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, isn't this a question that's always asked of somebody? Well, how, how did you feel during that mm -hmm. moment? Yeah. Oh, I, I think I was numb, <laughs> to tell the truth. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was all a kind of a blur, but it was a great blur, you know? Yeah. I mean, uh, I couldn't believe that, you know, after all these years, it had finally been accepted and produced on mm. Broadway and so beautifully and expensively done. Yeah. yeah. It was lavish. And and of course the stars were all, you know, first first rate actors. Absolutely. First and foremost, you know, and then some some of them were known better than others. Right. Shall we say. Right. Yeah. Besides <laughs> there um, were like two hundred <laughs> people outside of the stage door every night. Right. To, no, to absolutely. see Jim Barsons, yeah. you know. Um, besides, <clears throat> now that you've you've done this whole uh, Tony campaign, besides the boys in the band walking away with the trophy for um, mm. for the to with the Tony <clears throat> for best play revival, what are you most looking forward to on Tony night? Well, I think just getting through it because <laughs> <laughs> I was just told that a car will pick me up at mm -hmm. four thirty in the afternoon. You know, yeah, and then it's uh, a long night. It's a <laughs> long night. I mean, right. the first award isn't given until seven, right, so right. Uh, there's that act one, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then I guess after my date, who by the way is my goddaughter, who is Natalie Wood's Absolute. daughter. Oh, yeah. fantastic. Natasha fantastic. Wagner, yeah. yeah. She's flying in from LA to be my date. It's be, be wonderful. So then we'll go inside the music hall, and I don't know what, there'll be, you know. <laughs> going to be lots of There'll surprises. Be others, and then, and, yeah. uh, <laughs> maybe there's a bar somewhere. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure, there, I'm sure uh, there will be. Uh, yeah. And then the ceremony starts and I don't know how long do you think they run the Tonys? They don't do they run as long as the Oscars? No, do? we're the we theater people are pretty good at <clears throat> shutting a thing down at the time that we're uh, supposed to. Like we're we're good uh, with you're strict schedules. It down at 11. Yeah, so we're maybe. good we're good with strict schedules, but then you have lots of parties, so uh, oh, <laughs> yeah, we do have a couple of <laughs> terrific parties. Absolutely. To go to. Amazing. Yeah. Okay, so we'll do one last question. And Chris wants to know if the game and act, the phone game in Act Two, mm -hmm. was inspired by something you experienced, anything from your personal experience. No, I made it up um, because it, it needed to be a <laughs> decidedly <laughs> vicious. Uh, game and uh, I had a, a woman friend an actress who always used to say uh, in, in affairs of the heart there are no rules that was just one of her standard lines mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so I thought well I'm going to call it affairs of the heart and there won't be any uh, there will be rules right but very strange ones <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> And, and since we're and yes. because we are celebrating Pride Month, yeah. and you you oh, know yeah. the boys in the band is you know it, it is the groundbreaking play that what do you hope if you were to um, just sort of envision where we're headed in terms of LGBTQ pride and advancements and equality and all that what do you hope the next ten years will will breed? Oh in well, terms I, of that? I mostly hope that there are no setbacks hmm. that. There, you know, it's it's such a dangerous time mm -hmm. for uh, particularly yeah. trans. Yeah. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, everything. Uh, I, so I just hope they don't roll back this administration, and if it, you know, should uh, continue uh, <laughs> 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 for, for another four years, yeah. um, I, I just hope they don't, you know, take away what's been so terribly difficult and so many people have suffered for to, mm -hmm. to achieve you know yeah do you do, does the younger uh, generation of uh, LGBTQ people do they give you hope do they do they do you get the good right this inspiration do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. well and then yeah. I must say that's the that's most people you mm -hmm. know yeah they're not too many clueless gays. They never were. <laughs> they set too many styles. They make the culture. Come on. Well put, sir. Well, thank you so thank much. You. It has been such a pleasure. Congratulations thank again you. on all the success, thank success you with this. For having we're rooting for you on yeah. that night. Of course, of thank course. You. Caitlin, why don't you take us out? Yes. 
Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single weekday here on Facebook. You can listen to us wherever you get your podcast by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow when we talk to special honorary Tony winner Harold Wheeler and Tony nominee Harold Wheeler all about Ain't Too Proud.